number nine, number nine, the nine, nine, number nine, nine, number nine, nine, number nine, the nine, number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. Come and ride along with Hawkeye and Genie on an excursion visiting cities, communities, villages, towns, desert towns, ghost towns, wineries, internment camps, beach camps, desert camps, date camps, space camps, a visit to Area 51, a Nevada brothel and some other places of interest to find out what is really going on during the aftermath of the COVID. Hold it, Hawkeye. You guys visited a house of ill repute? Yeah, we did. On our way right now, in the, the southernmost part of Death Valley, we're stopping to visit China Ranch Date Farm. Looks like it's going to be a little more difficult than what we anticipated. It's supposedly not a tourist uh, venture, but yet they are open to the public. They have a bakery. You can buy things in their gift shop. Uh, their land is for rent for photography. Apparently it's got some beautiful spots. This would be deadly if it were raining right now. We would be in flash flood territory. These canyons can be gravely unforgiving. Take a look at that little chimney rock. That's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Huh. A little bit of green here makes me think there's some brown water up pretty high. We still got a mile to go. A mile, you say? I'll make that point nine. You okay? Well, anyway, get notified when new episodes are available to be viewed. Click on that little black cat image on the bottom right hand corner to subscribe to Hawkeye's Tales and Trails. Absolutely free, it is our recommendation that if you are new to Hawkeye's Tales and Trails, start with episode 1. Please share our videos with others. Their mission is to show you places, things and events that you may not normally get to see or hear. Then publish videos on YouTube for you to experience what has happened. Remember that all information is deemed to be reliable, but no guarantee that it is. As Jeannie said episode 99 is about a place in Mojave Desert, which is in Inyo County, California, and in the United States of America. China Ranch State Farm is about seven miles south-southeast of Tacopa Hot Springs, which was the topic of our previous episode. Like much of North America, today's Mojave Desert was influenced by the forward movement and retreat of successive ice ages over the next several million years. Although the ice sheets and glaciers did not come this far south, their runoff during the warming periods filled many of today's dry lakes and basins. Runoff channels connected some of these basins together. Over at least the past 10,000 years, the climate of the Mojave Desert continued to get drier and hotter. Oases of water and greenery like China Ranch became cut off from each other, like islands of life in a sea of barren desert. In some places unique types of plants and animals evolved and adapted to the circumstances of their particular island. These oases also became important stopover points, and sometime destinations, for many species of migratory birds. At China Ranch, more than 225 species have been logged, some coming from as far away as Central and South America. The ranch is also home to a large variety of other desert animals, including gray and kit foxes, bobcats, kangaroo rats and pack rats, coyotes, cottontail and jackrabbits, and, of course, the infamous horsefly. Surprisingly, 
Poisonous snakes are rare, and several non-poisonous varieties are much more common there in the canyon. The normal varieties of desert insects are also abundant, including tarantulas, scorpions, black widow spiders, and salpugids, or vinegaroons. Though their bite or sting may be painful, apart from the black widow, none are truly dangerous to man. The Shoshone and Paiute Indians migrated into the Great Basin sometime after 1000 AD nomadic hunters and gatherers. They undoubtedly used the various resources of the canyon for food and shelter. During the cooler months they frequented the hot springs in Tacopa, hunting small game and gathering mesquite beans and other plants. Like today's snowbirds, most left for the summer and spent the hot months in the higher elevations of the local mountains, hunting deer, bighorn sheep, and gathering pinion nuts in the fall. Because they needed to be mobile, they traveled in small groups of a few families with few physical possessions. The village at Tacopa Hot Springs, known as Yaga, was the largest settlement in the area and had about 70 inhabitants when it was visited by new Mexican horse trader Antonio Armijo in the spring of 1830. Armijo's visit is the first known recorded visit by a European to this immediate area. He established what came to be known as the Old Spanish Trail, which was the route from Santa Fe, New Mexico to the Spanish settlements in California. It followed a winding route from waterhole to waterhole across the desert, and so was known as the longest, crookedest, most arduous trail in the West. From 1830 until 1849 the main customers on the trail were a ragtag group of American, Mexican, Canadian, and Indian horse raiders known collectively by their victims as Los Chaguanosos. The large and fertile ranchos of California had an abundant supply of horses and mules, but in Santa Fe and points east a scarcity of animals drove the prices extremely high, the raiders would steal all the animals they could find from the Spanish ranchos in California, and then drive them as fast as possible into the desert and east along the Spanish trail. Often there would be a posse in pursuit only a day or two behind them. A decline in fur prices and the lure of big profits to be made drew many of America's most famous mountain men into the horse trading business along the old Spanish trail. Among these were Jim Beckworth, Pegleg Smith, Bill Williams, Wakera the Ute Raider, and Dick Owens, for whom the Owens Valley is named. The gold rush in 1849 created a ready market for horses in California, and effectively ended the horse stealing business along the trail. Is that not far out? Santa Fe, Spanish for Holy Faith, the city was founded in 1610 as the capital of Nuevo Mexico, which makes it the oldest state capital in the United States. What do you think about that? John Fremont traveled on the Spanish Trail in the spring of 1843, on his way east after heading a reconnaissance expedition to California. On April 29th he passed the confluence of China Ranch Creek and the Amargosa River, about one mile to the south. Two days before two of his scouts, Kit Carson and Alexis Godey, traveling in advance of the main group, had shot and killed two Indians here in China Ranch Canyon. During the fall and winters of 1849 and 1850 dozens of parties of 49-foot heirs bound for California gold fields used the trail and their journals contain numerous notes about the Amargosa Canyon. Although this route took them far to the south of the gold country, it was warm enough not to present the risk of freezing to death, as the story of the Donner Party was already well known. Little is known about activities or the people at China Ranch from 1850 until the turn of the century. According to available sources, a Chinese man named either Quan Sing or Afu came to the canyon after many years of work in the Death Valley Borax Mines. He developed the water, planted fruits and vegetables, and raised meat for the local mining camps. It became known as Chinaman's Ranch. Sometime in 1900, a man named Morrison appeared, and, as the story goes, he ran the Chinese farmer off at gunpoint and claimed the ranch for his own. Morrison eventually sold out, but the name had stuck. Since then the canyon has had many owners and worn many different faces, including a fig farm, cattle ranch, hog farm, alfalfa farm, and others. In 1970, the property was purchased by Charles Brown Jr. and Bernice Sorrells, 
the son and daughter of area pioneer and longtime state senator Charles Brown of Shoshone. It remains in these families today. The date grove was planted from seed in the early 1920s by Vanola Modine, youngest daughter of Death Valley area pioneer Art J. Fairbanks. Approximately half of the trees are male and produce only pollen. The females bear in the fall, yielding from 100 to 300 pounds of dates in a season. China Ranch remains a unique and fascinating place. If you are curious about the local history, consider visiting the Shoshone Museum, which has a good selection of books on the greater Death Valley area. Hawkeye and Genie will be publishing an episode about Shoshone soon. Be sure to subscribe. I am Pagan Woman Warrior Queen, Califia, the hostess of Hawkeye's Tales and Trails. Please enjoy this interview with China Ranch Hands Christie and Marla. Doing okay, how about you? Oh, doing great. It's okay if I photograph in here? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks for asking. Oh, uh, you bet. Would you be up to a short interview? Okay, um, well, first of all, introduce yourself. Okay, hi, I'm Marla and I work for Date Farm, China Ranch, as we have. How'd you end up here? I ended up here, I'm, I moved to Tacopa and then eventually found my way here as employment. Wow. And I love every minute of it. How long have you been here? Uh, about here? a month. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, I was wondering you know, how did the pandemic affect your business here? Okay, let me get one more person to add to this interview. Right. Hold on. Um, here, there's our card. Okay. We, we have a YouTube channel. Oh, do you? Some so, of you on YouTube? Yeah. Awesome. So since Yeah, you gave me permission, right? <laughs> okay, I did. I gave you permission. Hold All on. All right. Yeah. <laughs> do you have to be on camera? No, oh, no. Okay. It's strictly voluntary. I need your permission. What? I can answer your questions. Okay. Is it okay to photograph you? Okay. And then, uh, how long have you been here? Uh, I've been coming over here for 30 years. I've been oh. working here for two and a half, I think. Okay, great. Yeah, and how's business been? Good. We've had two, like four of the best years in the last two. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. Even during the p pandemic. The huh? dates don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> and um, yeah, you guys got a lot of McJewel date palms out there. We have uh, tw uh, 1,200 trees, and we have 22 different varieties. Oh. Uh, so we ha we have. Alawi to Gleet. We have a number of China Date Ranch hybrid trees that are only from here. Um, wow. So yeah, and this harvest starts in end of September and goes to about end of well to about now. Okay. And, well, uh, yeah, we were wondering that when we were driving up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, those palm trees, they're actually a giant grass. So yeah. they're actually a giant grass, and the dates hang in what they call droops. Okay. And we, we have to pollinate them by hand because we don't have enough bees out here. Oh, boy. And so our team is up there pollinating right now. So you'll see people up in the trees. They pollinate when we wrap, we wrap the dates and that protects them from animals, bugs, birds, coyotes, foxes, mice, everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. um, anything else you want to add? About the uh, China Ranch date farm. So China Ranch was started in 1840 by a, a Chinese man named Afu, and he was here. He was growing vegetables and alfalfa for the miners. We had a lot of miners, uh, mostly gypsum mines in this canyon. And then about a quarter mile from here, the the sidings of the railroad ended, um, and they went out along uh, Amagosa River. Uh, so. They had, so the railroad was right there too, so he was oh, okay. here selling vegetables and alfalfa to the railroad men and to the miners. Uh, we had, had, so there's, nobody really knows what happened to him. A lot of Chinese people went back, once they made money, they went back to China. Uh, sure. There's a story that the miners killed him and took the land, but then nobody worked the land, so I don't think that was true. Uh, I think that personally he raised money, enough money and went home. Um, but the other thing that happened a couple years ago is we do have flooding through Woodlow Creek here, mm -hmm. and that was the other stories that the flash flood came through and yeah, washed him away. We don't know. Yeah. Um, in 1920, the Manley family bought it, and John Manley's granddaughter was the one who planted the first palm, the date palms, and those are the big ones in the back back there, and they're still some of our biggest producers. And then the Brown family took it in 1970, and that's 
it's been in the Brown family ever since. Did I ask you to introduce yourself? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Christy Lauren, and I'm a fabulous storyteller and baker and uh, yeah. shake maker. Oh, do you grow your own weed? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I probably won't put that in. Um, yeah, that's about all I can think of, unless you got something to add. Well, oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your hospitality. Uh, Jeannie's going to probably buy a bunch of stuff here. Okay. And um, yeah, the, the the dirt road freaks people out because oh. you drop in and you think, oh my gosh, there's going to be federales or bomditos or something. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to turn around, but we have a good parking lot turn around. And some yeah. fantastic, some of my favorite hiking in all the world is right here wow. out of okay. the ranch. Do you guys have any overnight accommodations? We don't at the moment. I, we have one hip campsite, yeah. but I think you have to book online. I'm not even sure if that's going right now. We had a, a fire last year, and so it, we aren't, yeah. No kidding. We don't have the insurance for our campers. Uh, uh, tell you, we, uh, we have a YouTube channel. Okay. And actually, episode 14 is about hip camp. Okay. Here's our car. And uh, so, I don't know, you guys probably don't have internet out here, huh? Not, not uh, for the public, just for our cash register, so. Well, but good. yeah, we do have a hip camp. We used to be with Harvest Host, but that didn't really work out very well. Uh, um, hip camp might be, might work better. But. I like hip camp. It's been cool. Stay at a lot of, we've stayed at a bunch of cool places, wineries. And but we're really, stuff. we're only about four miles, seven miles away from Tacopa Hot Springs. And there's three resorts there that you can camp at. Um, there's a number of areas that you can just camp on BLM for free. And there's hot springs out there. Um, so, yeah, we encourage people to camp in Tacopa. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, thank you very much Welcome. for your interaction. And some more commentary here. Okay, okay. Hi. <laughs> uh, Tell us your life story. My life story? <laughs> well, it's a very end up, lengthy process. How did you end up at China Ranch? I ended up here. Uh, actually, my kids live here, and they uh, introduced this little place to me about seven years ago. And what I did was fell in love with this place. My daughter used to work here, and then I ended up moving to Tacopa with me and my son uh, about a month and a now month. And it was the absolute best thing I'd ever done in my whole life. All right. I, I completely realigned everything that I ever had from the city coming here and enjoy all of the open air, the people, my new friends, they're like family. I uh, I absolutely love living in the desert and I will never leave. Where you get where are you from originally? I'm originally from Denver. Oh, okay. Oh. Mile High City. Yep. Yeah. Mile High City. Yeah. Where are you guys from? Where are you from? Uh, Riverside County, California. Corona. Nice. Yeah. Very yeah. awesome. Yeah, we kind of live in between Lake or Lake Elsinore and Corona. Do you oh, know where yeah. that's at? Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Very awesome. Anything else you can think of? No, actually, um, I think the healing waters is what keeps me coming back. Really? Oh. Yeah, it's the also waters. our uh, all of the clay we have, the healing water, the the people that we have here, uh, it's, it's yeah. just an eclectic, uh, it's just beautiful. We're full of musicians, we're full of artists. Oh, we have a little enough. bit of everybody around us oh, and uh, nice. continuing to just bring in the peace and love that I think the world needs. Totally yeah. cool. Yeah. I play guitar. Yeah. Uh, Tacopia. Tacopia. There we go. That's it. It's Tacopia. We um, love it. Actually, uh, you know, we've been to many hot springs. We've been married over 50 years. Oh, nice. Unbelievable, huh? But, but we believe, you know, the Tacopa. honey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tacopa Hot Springs, uh, the water is silky. It is silky. Oh, it's, yeah. yeah. It is. It is. And, the, and that, the mineral compound is amazing for health. Is it? Yes. Yeah. It has huge amounts of health benefits. Wow. So I recommend anyone that's afraid of hot burning water uh, <laughs> to please get over that so they can enjoy like, the healing benefits of the water. Right on, yeah. Do you have a, a favorite hot springs here? Or? Uh, I just go to the, the Tacoma uh, Hot Springs. Yes, I enjoy it. And you meet new people, meet new friends. You do? Yeah. yeah. Yep, I packed up everything I had. Threw uh -huh. away all my corporate clothes. Oh, Sold you go to all my hair. Got free. <laughs> Good for you. Here. That's awesome. I don't even wear sunscreen. Oh. <laughs> Good for you. Yes, I am free. <laughs> 
Yes, yeah, it's the best thing. And I, I uh, can not even tell enough people to find that dream and make it happen yeah. because a lot of people don't have that skill. They don't have the that the little gumption. Yeah. Or the opportunity. You know. Yeah, well, you, anything's an opportunity in life. It's just, yeah. you just got to make force. You got to make it forward. happen. Just yeah. put that little bit out there and you'll have everything you want. That's true. Yeah. All right. I, got I just need that signature, honey. Oh. I mean, you need a receipt? Um, yeah, thank you. Here you are. Thank you. So and that's for you, and just sign that one. And does this include the um, the date check? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, okay, I, I thought of a question. Sure. You have a uh, worry stones and symbol stones. Yes. I guess what's the story on that? So these actually are little handheld stones that will help bring up your vibrational energy. Also reminds you, uh, for me, what not to worry about. Oh. So I turn these all around into a non-worry stone because you get to hold it and you think about it. A lot of them have different symbols. I typically go for anything that like something like that. I. I would do something that's more of a, a healing practice, but they're a nice little hand object just to hold on to and, and just remind you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Totally cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's nice to are, are you in the painted rock movement? Have you heard about that? I have been in the painted rock movement in really? Colorado during the pandemic. I was oh. one of the 35 people that started that in our little our little neighborhood. No kidding. Yeah. So we were painting rocks and setting them out, and I felt like uh, having that with the kids. Just uh, to give them hope, you know, yeah. that it's going to be okay. You find something pretty, it's natural. It was yeah. something for the kids that we did that. Because we couldn't have the Easter egg hunt anymore oh, during the first yeah. part of the pandemic. So we did rocks. Rocks cool. are cool. Yeah. yeah, we're just now getting to Learning about it, painting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Learning about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it <laughs> speaks to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, All right. Thank, thank you very enjoy. much. Thank you. Enjoy. Oh. And I, I will oh. subscribe. Please. Okay. Yes. Oh,